Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on short case revision for pediatrics cardiovascular station. And I will talk about the common questions asked by the examiners in short case exam. There are a few types of murmur that might be heard on examination. So it can be divided into systolic murmur or diastolic murmur and innocent murmurs. And usually in exam, the, our doctors will bring systolic murmur patients. And for systolic murmur, it also depends on where the murmur is heard loudest at. So murmurs that are heard loudest at the apex, the differential can be mitral regurgitation or mitral valve prolapse. If the systolic murmur heard loudest at the left lower sternal edge, we should think of ventricular septal defect, AVSD, tricuspid regurgitation, or Hockham. If it is heard loudest at the left upper sternal edge, then think of pulmonary stenosis, aortic stenosis, atrial septal defect, coarctation of iota, and subiotic VSD. If it is heard loudest at the right upper sternal edge, then H is probably aortic stenosis. Whereas for diastolic murmur, if heard loudest at the apex will be mitral stenosis, left lower sternal edge is aortic regurgitation, and left upper sternal edge is pulmonary regurgitation. Besides systolic and diastolic murmurs, Innocent murmurs is also sometimes heard in children, so we should put it as differential as well. Besides knowing the types of murmurs and their location, we also have to know about the grading of the murmurs. So there are six different grading, from soft to loudest. So from the softest is grade 1, where the murmur is barely audible. Grade 2, soft murmur but easily audible. Grade 3, moderately loud but no chill. Grade 4 is there is palpable chill on the chest. Grade 5 is with the stethoscope barely on the chest, we can already hear the murmur. And grade 6 is the loudest, where we don't need a stethoscope, we also can hear the murmur. So this is a slide showing the causes of acyanotic and cyanotic heart disease. So some of the conditions are cyanotic heart disease, which means it causes cyanosis, which is the bluish discoloration of the mucus, the lips, mucus membranes, or the skin. So the baby might look bluish in color. So the causes for cyanotic heart disease, the mnemonic is 5T and 1E. 5T consists of tricuspid atresia, truncus arteriosus, transposition of greater arteries, tetralogy of phthalate, and total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage, and the E is Eisenmenger syndrome, due to the pulmonary hypertension, causing a right to left shunting. So this is a common question that might be asked by the examiner. Whereas other conditions would be acyanotic heart disease, which won't cause any cyanosis. Next, the examiner might also ask what investigations would you like to do to confirm your diagnosis. So the three main investigations in cardiovascular station would be chest x-ray, ECG, and also 2D echocardiogram to look at the heart defect. The management will depend on your provisional diagnosis. So for ventricular septal defect, which is quite a commonly seen case in exams, this is the management. So it depends on the size of the VSD. If small, we can do watchful waiting because most of them close spontaneously, which is 80% of the cases. For moderate, if there is no affected growth, no heart failure symptoms, then we can consider for surgical closure of the VSD by five years old. If it is large VSD, the management include giving anti-failure drugs, pulmonary artery bending, and surgical closure by six months old. Besides surgical closure, there is also a new method, which is the transcatheter VSD closure. Whereas for ASD, which is atrial septal defect, small ones, we can do watchful waiting, and whereas large ones, close closure by five years old. If there is complications and hypertension, then we will need earlier closure of the defect. And these are the management for other less commonly seen cases. For pulmonary stenosis, it is also quite common. So mainly conservative, depending on the pressure gradient between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery. So if the pressure gradient is less than 60 millimeter mercury, then we can do conservative management. If it is more than 60, then it will require transcatheter balloon valvuloplasty 
or surgical valvuloplasty. Aortic stenosis is also same as the pulmonary stenosis and for AVSD, primary surgical repair by 6 months old. Coagulation of iota can do transcatheter balloon valvuloplasty plus or minus stenting or surgical repair and also treat other associated heart lesions. For PDA, which is pattern ductus arteriosus, if it is small with no murmur hurt, then conservative treatment. If small but there is murmur hurt, then at 1 years old, can do transcatheter coil or device closure. For large defects, you will need a surgical ligation or transcatheter closure. For tetralogy of failure, we can do a BT shunt, which is the Blalock toxic shunt, and then corrective surgery. For TGA, which is transposition of the greater arteries, depends on whether it is associated with other defects. Then this is the summary of the management we can do. And truncus arteriosus and tricuspid atresia are less commonly seen. So this is the summarized management for all the heart defects. That's all for this video, thank you.